Good morning. We're here for our Monday mentorship. So, so grateful to have you here today. My name is Corey Fisk and I am the curriculum developer, founder of Construction Management Online. So what we do is we teach construction management um, really about everything that you won't find in a textbook. And so we're able to provide a library of resources for you to be able to have courses that you can do step by step to guide you through some of those areas in construction, like how to design a submittal or how to create a schedule of values. And we were just able to take over some of that um, teaching that needs to happen that can't really be done by shadowing someone on the job site when they're trying to focus on their own work that they're doing. So today what we're going to do is just jump into some questions that have been asked by those that are studying construction management and want to know some answers in order to be able to accelerate their position into becoming a construction manager. So our first question today, how do you determine which subcontractor offers the best value and do you always go with the lowest bid? Okay, so some people are already knowing the answer to this. <laughs> no, you don't go with the lowest bid all the time. I have to be able to say that first right off the bat. Uh, sometimes the reason uh, why we go with lowest bid, you have to understand you get what you pay for, right? And uh, sometimes we might have to pay a little bit more, but we're going to get a subcontractor who's going to be able to do things more organized, going to be able to provide a cleaner, higher quality product. And so we might want to pay for that because in the long run is really what we're looking for. So although it might be more just in that one particular area or discipline, we're able to then use that as an opportunity to get ahead. So if we do pay less in other areas, we're, we're able to balance everything at the end of the day. Um, when you're looking at what subcontractor you're going to use, this is where I really feel it's important for everyone to understand how important relationships are in the construction industry. So determining which contractor is going to offer the best value is going to be determining what you know about that subcontractor. And the best way to be able to do that is through experience and through being able to work with them in other situations. So when we're able to have a relationship with these subcontractors and know how they perform on different types of jobs, then we're going to have a better understanding of which subcontractor we want to use for certain situations. Um, these could be contractors that are in the same discipline, but maybe one works better in rural scenarios and another one works better in more urban settings. And so knowing and understanding your subcontractors is going to be key. So when we look at always going with the lowest bid, sometimes we don't have a choice. So the delivery method of that particular project, or whether it's a public works project or a government project that's using taxpayer monies, this may not give us any option but to use the lowest responsible bidder. And so that's why we want to make sure that if we do have to use the lowest bidder, that we have structured our contract in a way to put terms and conditions that really define the expectations and boundaries of our project. So even in a low bid situation, we can get a high quality result. So I hope that answers your question on how do you determine which subcontractor offers the best value and do you always go with the lowest bid? Our second question, how do you work your way up to project management and what other certifications are, val are valuable in construction? So again, this is a um, contentious 
topic because there's a lot of people out there that are telling you that it is not necessary for you to get a degree in order for you to be able to be in the construction industry. And they are 100% correct. But we want to be able to understand what is this really saying. And so when we really take a look at it, we want to understand that there are different positions within the construction industry that can have an advantage to having a baseline developed understanding technical construction concepts by going through a program, whether that be an apprenticeship program with a union, a technical school, or a, a community college or a four-year school, either any of those are going to have different reasons of why you might want to look at them as the option for how you're structuring your education platform and how it's going to look on your resume. Now, we also want to make sure that you're learning what you're supposed to be learning. So it's not just all about what's on the paper, because eventually you're going to get found out. Right. So make sure that when it's on the paper that you feel confident that you can back it up and that you're going to be able to provide the experience necessary to be in the position that you're looking at. But when you're looking at a project management position, this is going to be that next step after being a construction manager. And so we've already gained experience in our hands on education in being in the work. And so being a construction manager and or being someone who works with their hands out on the job site, you've been able to establish a really good foundational baseline for your comprehension of the construction industry, which includes understanding the order of precedence that work takes place. And so moving up into a project management position is now kind of being like an overseer of probably multiple projects, but of being able to see how everything works in a project from the start to the finish or commencement to completion. And so in order to be able to move up into that, now you're looking more at the procedural systems of a project rather than really getting into the detail of what happens on a day-to-day -day basis on the construction site. You're usually going to be having uh, an individual reporting to you that's going to be telling you what's happening on the job site. And then at, at a project management level, you're able to then manage multiple projects with people feeding that progress or information up to you. So we do have degree programs that we can go through. We do have certification programs that we can go through, but there's a lot of personal growth instruction that can happen out there, much like what we provide at Construction Management Online. So being able to uh, pick and choose the education that you feel that you need in order to be able to um, elevate the experience that you currently have. And so we have a 12 week program that I'll be talking about a little bit later that offers you that introduction into what your roles and responsibilities are going to be in this new position. And so that is one way to be able to um, not have to go through a certification or degree program in order to be able to understand what it's going to take for you to be a project manager. Now, certifications are very good for identifying credibility. And this is an easy way for contractors to be able to filter whether or not you're right for their company. So you can look at things like Construction Management Association of America. You can look at um, the PMI or P PMP, uh, Project Management Professional. I think. Um, and you can look at the Construction Management Institute, where they have three different levels of construction management certification, which includes a professional, expert, and mastery level. So these are different areas. And then you can also continue then looking at personal growth, where everything can also be certified in the work that you're doing, so that you can continue building up your resume. 
So moving to our third question, how do you search for jobs in construction with no experience and what kind of pay should you expect? Okay, so we can't be unrealistic here, right? And, and if you listen to the question, uh, we have to be very honest with ourselves. But if it says, what kind of pay should you expect with no construction experience? Well, I, I'm going to have to give you some hard news here. <laughs> You're not going to be able to step out of college with no construction experience and expect to be making the big bucks with the construction managers out there. Now, there's some really good money to be made in the construction industry. And these days, I'm hearing senior project managers and senior construction superintendents who are also in a project management role are making anywhere from $180,000 to $200,000, $225,000 a year. Now, this is for individuals who probably have at least 10 years of experience and they're able to really lean on that experience to promote efficiency and productivity in their jobs. And part of their salary is really showing their worth in the management of these complex systems. But if you have no construction experience, but you have a college degree, then you could be looking at an intern uh, apprenticeship position or an entry level position that's probably going to run somewhere between 50 to 75, $95,000. And this is going to be dependent upon region and where you're at in the United States. So in California, you're probably going to start out making a lot more money than someone who might be uh, out in the Midwest. But obviously, with some of the unfortunate circumstances that have come around the weather that has destroyed things out east, there's a lot of potential opportunity to be able to gain some construction experience really quickly and to be able to do so where you start from the bottom and work your way up and you're able to really get a full-fledged knowledge experience by starting uh, in construction with your hands and working your way up this way. When you do it this way, you're probably going to find that you might start off at $15 an hour, probably more around $18 to $22 an hour, and then being able to work your way up from there. It also then is going to depend if you're union or non-union. And it's also going to depend on what kind of job you're working on. So is it private or is it a public works or a Davis-Bacon federal project? So these are all things that need to be taken into consideration. But I think really the focus needs to move off of how much money you're going to make. And instead, really first identifying exactly where you want to be at some point in your career, and then being able to pick and choose jobs that are going to align you in a more direct streamlined approach to move into that career that you're looking for. I would say that the, the hardest thing to do is when I have students who are currently working in a position that doesn't align perfectly with a construction management opportunity and they're making really good money and then it's really hard to quit that job to go and follow their dreams because once we get used to a certain type of income then we start spending our way into having to live in that income space and it makes it hard to have to take steps backwards. So just recognize that early and then you'll be able to pick and choose jobs that are going to align more directly with where you want to be. And then you won't have to really bump into that particular challenge. So I hope that that has uh, answered some questions for you on our Mentorship Monday. I just wanted to again uh, explain to you what our Construction Management Essentials offers. And that is being able to give you a college comprehensive curriculum, but 
push it all into about 12 weeks of study. And we're able to do this with live lectures. We're doing this with all of the material necessary that you need in order to be able to establish a really good foundational base in understanding what your job is going to be as a construction manager. We'll be able to provide a certification for this construction management essentials online. It takes about 12 weeks to complete and we're getting ready for, to open up our next cohort, which will be in November. So make sure that you message me if you're interested in receiving more information about this, or you can visit our website at Construction Management Online. You can also see free videos that will help support you becoming a construction manager and be able to answer a few questions here and there that we go into about different aspects of your job as a construction manager. And so you can jump on that YouTube channel to be able to get those videos. Otherwise, I will see you here next Monday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And if you are wanting to keep up on the latest and get notifications of when we are online, just subscribe to our newsletter there at Construction Management Online. Have a great Monday and a wonderful week.